What did you learn most from your first NFL draft experience? You know, Peter, back at the Senior Bowl, Ozzie Newsom, who's a guy I had so much respect for over the years from the Baltimore Ravens, I saw him one night out to dinner, and he congratulated me on the job, and I said, hey, Oz, you got any advice? And he said, Mike, here's the deal. He said, having an opinion is a hell of a lot easier than having to make a decision. And I got to tell you, Peter, I learned the weight of that last night. Mike Mayock, after years of being in the media, now the GM of the Oakland Raiders. And look, Peter, when everyone was surprised by the Cleveland Farrell draft pick at number four, my first thought is, hey, look, we wouldn't be surprised by it if Mike Mayock was still a draft expert. He'd have been banging on the Cleveland yeah. Farrell drum for the last three months, and the rest of us would have picked up on it, and we'd have expected him to be taken in the top five. So not having the benefit of Mayock's expertise made it harder for the rest of us to be ready for what Mayock was going to do. And look, it was a surprise. They took Cleveland Farrell at number four. You had a great point yesterday. They were hoping that the phone would ring. They believed they could trade down and still get him. The phone didn't ring. They had to take him. They got the guy they wanted, and I've got the impression across the board peter that they got the guys they wanted here's the thing with their draft mike i i i made this point that you know john gruden is an impetuous guy look at this graphic right here and i want you to look at josh jacobs and jonathan abram okay for a month the the oakland raiders have focused almost solely on getting those two guys with the, their second two picks in the first round. But Mike Mayock was convinced and convinced John Gruden, we are not giving up draft capital to go chase these guys. Trust our board, trust what we know about the other teams around us, and we know that we're going to get those two guys. Now, it got real hairy because Philadelphia traded up ahead of them, as I wrote in my column. They got very nervous that the Eagles, who loved Josh Jacobs, were going up to get him, but they didn't. And, and just a quick little note that I found very interesting. Right after they take Josh Jacobs, there's euphoria in the room. And now they're focused on Abram because that's the 24th pick. Now at 27, they have to wait for two other teams to pick and make sure they still get this safety from Mississippi State, Jonathan Abram. And they wait a second, and all of a sudden, you know, Mayock starts thinking, man, do I want to use a five to go trade with Baltimore at 25 to ensure we get our guy? And Gruden is like, do it, do it, do it. But Mayock said, no, we're going to trust where we are. We're going to trust our process. They did. They ended up getting him. And so I think the moral of the story here is that they're no longer going to be just sprinting and doing all of these things to build their team just because it feels good. There's going to have to be a plan. And if you lose a guy or two along the way, you do. But I think that's one of the things that Mike Mayock has brought to John Gruden, a sort of settling down of Gruden that I think is really going to help him in roster construction. Yeah, I think that's a great point you bring up, Peter, because, yes, I mean, John, I've been around him a lot. Gruden, he can be emotional and make emotional-based decisions at times. Mayock seems to be the guy to go, wait, chill out here. This is what makes sense here. Let's not go crazy just because of emotions here and mess up everything, you know, for years to come. They, the, the Oakland Raiders, Mike Mayock, did a phenomenal job. They killed the draft. Their first four picks are all going to be starting on their football team. The corner they got, Trayvon Mullen, Mullen, uh, at the, you know, the 40th pick in the second round. I thought he was one of the best man-to-man -man cover corners in the draft. Uh, really, you could put the Raiders into the discussion, uh, and this, this goes to Mike Mayock again, for winning the offseason. When you look at their free agency and go Antonio Brown, Trent Brown, you know, uh, Tyrell Williams, you know, some of the other, uh, LaMarcus Joyner they got, uh, just Brandon Marshall, J.J. Nelson, all these players to improve the roster, they have really killed it. Now, within in all that, again, I do think at number four with Clell and Farrell, 
that was almost as that was almost as much of an overpick as Daniel Jones at number six. I mean, Peter, they admitted it in your column basically that they were hoping the Dolphins at thirteen or somebody would trade up because they still thought he would be on the board. But I'm never going to be mad at a team for taking somebody that they liked, and it really seemed like it was the only way they could orchestrate getting all three positions they wanted there in the first round was to overdraft for a Farrell at ten. And so I get it, and I'm not going to fault them for that. But really, a phenomenal well, Chris, job. Remember, remember, remember one year ago. Yeah. On the night of the on the night of day one of the draft, what did people say when Chris Ballard took Quentin Nelson number six? Oh my God, you took a guard number six? You overdrafted Quentin Nelson. Well, and the moral of the story is if Quentin Nelson is a great player, and it appears at least as a rookie that he was, yes, and he's going to be then it's not overpicking. If you get a great player, no matter what position he is, at four or six, you've done a good job. Peter, my first thought when I read your point that no one called the Raiders when they were on the clock at number four was, hey, if one of the teams between six and 17 was hell-bent on drafting Dwayne, uh, Daniel Jones, they could have called the Raiders and traded up and gotten them, gotten him before the Giants at six. They didn't even call. Do we know if there were conversations, though, beforehand that would have set parameters of what the Raiders were looking for and then just no one bit? Or did they have no conversations whatsoever at any time with anyone about moving out of that number four spot? spot I don't know the answer to that Mike knowing Mayock I bet he did have conversations but because he's just the ultimate boy scout he's always going to be prepared but I can't answer the question the point is though in that eight or ten minute period they didn't get a single phone call and that to me tells you what the market is uh, at that point in the draft and nobody is so hot for somebody now if Quinn and Williams had been there, let's say the Jets had taken Josh Allen at three and Quinn and Williams had been there, I'll bet you a lot of money they would have gotten calls for the fourth pick then. Peter, how do you look at, you know, just what was your outside look? You're just evaluating Mayock and Gruden all together. I mean, you know, what was your overall synopsis just about the relationship, the working relationship and how it's all working? That, uh, that John Gruden really, really needs... Mike Mayock. Right. You know, he was in what I would call an arranged marriage with Reggie McKenzie. You know, and he thought Reggie McKenzie was okay, but it wasn't his guy. And so this was totally different, Chris. This is a guy who, I, I'm just going to read you one quote from, from my column. I've known Mike since I was offensive coordinator at Philadelphia in 95. I work there, I see Mike. I get the head coaching job in Oakland. I see Mike. I go to Tampa. I see Mike. I start broadcasting. I see Mike. I really got to know Mike, and his preparation is no BS. That is what John Gruden likes. He likes a sick football nerd. That's what Mike Mayock is. Right. Everybody knows it. He is on February 15th. He's going to be up till 3 o'clock in the morning looking at the fifth-round corners. That's what he does. That's what he loves. John Gruden needs that kind of guy. He also needs a little bit of an old school marm. Right. That is what Mike Mayock was to him. He said, hey, settle down, settle down. We'll get our guys. And Gruden settled down, and they got their guys. Hey, Peter, my theory from last week was that Mike Mayock sent all the scouts home to protect Gruden from himself, that he'd have been walking around the facility last week bouncing ideas off of guys and giving up secrets, and then they'd have to worry about one of those scouts leaking it. I think so too, Mike. I think one of the things to realize when he sent the scouts home is that he already knew who he was keeping and who he wasn't keeping. To me... You know, Mayock told me, he says, hey, I got probably 75 calls or texts from everybody around the league and my friends and coaches saying, good for you, basically. Uh, what a non-story this is. Because so many teams, ask Chris Sims about the year he was with the Patriots in the draft. I mean, Bill Belichick doesn't show anybody his draft board. It's the same thing with the Raiders. Mike Mayock is not going to show people other than his absolutely most trusted people. Uh, you know, he's not going to show anybody. He's not going to show his hands. So 
I don't think it was all that weird what the Raiders did. No, I'm with you. I don't think it was all that weird either. I, I, I thought it made a lot of sense. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys. Wait Mike a minute. Mayock, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said it was weird last week. I did not, Mike. You're crazy. I said it was totally oh, wait. freaking smart. Oh, wait. You said it was I weird. Said, I said you were weird last week. Yes, thank Sorry, you. I got confused. Yes, you did. <laughs> I am weird. You're dumb. And I didn't say that last week, okay? So, but here's the other thing. Peter, just, you're, you know, you talked about it a little bit at the start of the hour if Kyler Murray somehow wasn't you know taken at number one did you get any inside info about the love affair that maybe Gruden had I thought Gruden would love a Kyler Murray uh do you think I'm right in that no I hey look Chris I was very open after the scouting combine John Gruden was telling people he loves Kyler Murray and so I just I always thought I always thought Right. That this is going to be something to watch. Now, I believe that even if he really wanted Kyler Murray, that Mayock would have convinced him, throttle down, big boy, because we got too many holes here that we absolutely have to fill. And imagine Kyler Murray had been sitting there at four. And imagine, it, let's just say the Raiders picked him. Well, you'd almost have to at that point get on the phone and start speed dialing teams yeah. starting with the New York Giants does anybody want you know for either a one or maybe next year's one does anyone want Derek Carr right so it's it's just a i think it was just a little bit tricky and they felt like they had too many needs to go after Murray all right, we need to take a break. When we return, though, now that there are a bunch of new players who have been added to these teams, there is the challenge of matching them with numbers and the reality that other players wore those numbers in the past, and that may cause some difficulties as we put new players into old numbers. We'll talk about that very important topic when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.